Hi, I'm Tom Neiman. This is Inside the Summit League. Great to get another Summit League season going. And if you don't know, our Summit League schools are spread across the middle of America, bound by Denver out to the west, North Dakota State and Fargo up to the north, Fort Wayne, Indiana to the east, and Oral Roberts University down in Tulsa, Oklahoma to the south. And we welcome the Golden Eagles back to the Summit League this year. Oral Roberts returns after two years in the Southland Conference. Well, Summit League Soccer has started this season, and there are a couple of very good student-athlete stories out there, including an inspiring young woman at Oral Roberts named Cheyenne Diggs. She is coming back from not one, but two ACL knee injuries. I came in, I transferred, and I had a hiccup with an injury, and it was frustrating, but I'm back, off, I'm back off of it, and um, we're just progressing with the season. This is my last year, so I want to make the best of it. It's frustrating in the moment, but once you overcome it and like you see like how long it takes and the work it takes, I mean, it pays off in the end, too. A lot of people get down on themselves, but you just kind of have to shake it off and look forward. As soon as she was injured last season and over the offseason, I mean, she began working and rehabbing, and um, she's, she's, got a, she's got a motor that never stops, so she's just go, go, go. So um, for Cheyenne, I know it's a, it's, a, it's a big deal for her to get healthy. She's still working on that, um, but the most important attribute of Cheyenne is simply her heart and her work rate. So um, whether she's physically injured or not, her heart will, will come through, and, and we're confident in that and, and faithful that she's going to have a great season. Well, so far, so good. Diggs has started both matches so far this season for Oral Roberts. Well, another inspiring soccer story comes out of Fort Wayne and a sophomore named Andy Lazzarini. She has a great outlook despite being blind in one eye. It happened at birth. So um, when I was born, I was a forcep baby. The, like metal tongs that they're supposed to get your temples and then like pull you down. And uh, they missed my temple and got my eye and uh, they just like tore a bunch of nerves and stuff in there so caused my blindness. During eighth grade uh, ODP training I got um, a keeper punched the ball into my eye and caused scar tissue to form so my eye doctor said if I got hit there ever again that I could lose uh, my sight completely and me being young and stupid thought goggles are ugly I don't want to wear them and never did and then freshman year of uh, varsity soccer um, it was a game against Bartlett over in Illinois and um, one of the defenders tried to cross a ball over me and got me right in the eye and caused a hematoma and um, so it was like all blood in my eye and I was like basically looking through blood and I couldn't see anything so I freaked out thinking that that was it I was never gonna see again and got rushed to the eye doctor and stuff and they just said that I was really lucky and it's just a hematoma so I have worn goggles ever since scared me pretty good. I'm pretty used to them. They actually come in handy on sunny days because I got them so that they shade in the sun, but um, when it rains it kind of sucks because they fog up and get all rainy and stuff, so, but I deal. <laughs> Sometimes um, they try to play me on the right as much as possible um, so that I can see the rest of the field, but um, I think that I have adjusted since it's been that way my whole life, so don't really know any different. Well, Lazzarini already has uh, scored one goal in one of the IPFW exhibition games this year. Fort Wayne's got a couple of home matches coming up this weekend. Well, Denver won the regular season in women's soccer and the league championship last year in the tournament. And coming up, we'll hear from Coach Jeff Hooker on this year's Pioneer. And we take you to break with a spectacular goal from the Denver men last week. Jordan Schweitzer with a blast in Denver's 1-0 exhibition win at Air Force. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort and Dakota Land Honda. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Health and your Heartland Chevy dealers. Well, the Summit League women's soccer coaches have picked Denver to do it again. The Pioneers get eight of the nine first place votes to win the league and repeat as regular season champions. Coach Jeff Hooker says... That's great, but we'll see because you never know when a new season rolls around and some new players come rolling in. You know, um, the, the one thing about it, uh, call it soccer, is the players uh, consistently change. Um, it, it's, it's the college game where you can't 
keep your best player and sign him to a, a, a five-year, ten-year contract. You know, it's it's one of those things where uh, the change is going to happen. It's inevitable, uh, but the expectations stay the same. You know, for us, it is uh, right now we're in the the, the portion of our non-conference schedule, and what we want to do is we want to put ourselves in position through the non-conference that if something happens and we, we happen to not win the conference championship, that we would get an automatic bid in the NCAA tournament. So these games are uh, very, very important uh, for us um, as a team and to reach our specific goals. When you drop three starters from last year, you're gonna have uh, you know some growing pains. Um, I thought against Air Force, our back four was, was shaky. Um, and then I thought at times against uh, Texas Tech, our back four looked really, really, really solid. And there were times where you know our midfield wasn't so great defending, and they had no problems uh, covering for people, picking up for other people's mistakes and things like that. So we're right where we thought we would be, maybe actually a little bit ahead uh, with having Stella come in and, and kind of step in and, and help fortify the back as well. Cassidy was tremendous as a freshman for a freshman to come in and win 18 games and have one regular season loss. Uh, that hardly ever happens. Uh, usually when you have a freshman goalkeeper, they'll find a way to lose a game or two. Um, and with Cassidy, she found a way to, to switch that around and win us a game or two. Um, this year, she's got a little bit of the injury bug um, coming in from the, the winter and the spring and is trying to get healthy. Um, she's been very good in the games, um, but she's gonna need to do a little bit more in practice and getting healthy. Because to be honest, the, the race, the competition for goalkeepers is starting to tighten right now. And we, we, we can honestly say we feel comfortable with any three in goal right now starting if, if that were to happen. You know, we got to see some towns and some uh, places and fields and campuses that we had never seen before. And this, this year, uh, basically with flip-flopping the schedule around, it's going to be the same way. We're going to be traveling uh, to the schools that came to us last year. So, uh, you know, that's kind of a long way ahead as far as uh, I'm concerned, but we're really looking forward to getting to some new places. Well, Denver beat North Dakota State in the league tournament final last year, and North Dakota State's going to be good again. They have a couple of first-team All-Summit League players coming back in Lauren Miller and Anisha Kinnerath. Those two combined for the lone goal in the match as North Dakota State beat North Dakota to open the season. In the 63rd minute, Kinnerath chips it through, Miller puts it in, and the Bison beat UND 1-0. And for all the scores from all the matches from the first week of the season, you can find them at thesummitleague.org. When we return, we will continue our preseason look at women's soccer and the return of Oral Roberts. And how cool would it be to spend the summer in Italy? Find out from two student athletes who did just that. Their stories coming up later in the show. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort and Dakota Land Honda. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Health and your Heartland Chevy dealers. Oral Roberts University was in the Summit League from 1997 to 2012, and they built a reputation for championships in baseball and basketball, but they were pretty salty in women's soccer, too. The Golden Eagles went 15-5 last year in the Southland Conference, but lost in the first round of the conference tournament. So they've got a slew of seniors back and ready to get after it this year. Yeah, I think the girls have been focused. Um, they've, they've come into the season motivated, which is a big deal. Um, the, the senior leaders have done an outstanding job. Um, there's, um, in, their, in their minds, there's some unfinished business from last season, which I'm sure is the same across the country. I feel like they're very motivated to try to take next steps this year. We definitely lost um, some great players from last season. Um, we, we have a saying around here that we're not trying to fill any shoes. We'll just hang their shoes up and enshrine them. And the hope is that uh, this year's group um, does, this, does the same work and we'll enshrine their, their shoes next year. You know, playing Utah, playing the three Big 12 schools, it's just an exciting schedule all the way around. And the girls know that they've earned that. Um, they're, they're very, very excited about the opportunity that the season presents. I think there's a handful of teams that were playing that played national tournament last year. So that's exciting. There's a couple of teams that are already preseason ranked top 25. All of those things are just exciting for us. Um, the, the girls love the opportunity and the challenge that's in front of them. We're honored that those teams are, are wanting to play us. Well, in addition to soccer and baseball and basketball, Oral Roberts was pretty good at volleyball in their Summit League days. They are picked to finish fourth in the league this year as kind of an unknown team coming back in. So let's get to know them a little bit. Here is Rob Walden with the head coach. 
Five graduated seniors means five freshmen, but uh, you and I were talking beforehand, and even though they're young and they were just playing high school in some cases four, five, six months ago, you're going to lean heavily on that rookie class this year. Yes, I do, and especially three of them uh, played all the way up till July. They were at the Nationals, um, one international actually playing with her national team and things like that. So they're not that they were just six months doing nothing. They were actually practicing and playing a good competition, so, so that helps a lot. Uh, Preseason schedule uh, before we get into Summit League play, very exciting for you guys. Going to Malibu for the Pepperdine Tournament. You'll be back at Missouri State, which always has a loaded field. Uh, going to play an event at Tulsa, going to play an event at Houston. So it's a, a tough schedule and also one that uh, has a lot of good destination. How excited are the girls to be playing uh, such a challenging schedule in the preseason? Well, I think they're excited to just go to Pepperdine. Yeah. <laughs> what they want to be getting there, we'll, we'll see once we step on a court. Uh, but I think it's going to be great competition overall on our schedule. Uh, you know, when Pepperdine um, contacted me with an email, you never kind of turn down. Sure. Uh, the good of the school. So. Sure. So we'll jump on that. Uh, Missouri State was um, kind of an easy trip for us, but a great competition too. Um, Houston, uh, we never play University of Houston, so that was something that I kind of like, okay, let's, uh, let's explore sure. um, that uh, that field. So I'm excited, the girls are excited. I think they're kind of like, okay, let's play some real games and not just practice. So they're anxious as well. Yeah, always good to see another team. Now, you've been a part of uh, every trip ORU's ever made through the MidCon and now the Summit League, and now we're back in the Summit League. Uh, what kind of adjustment as a program do you guys have, uh, maybe not you personally, because you've been to all these places before, but uh, as a program, none of the girls have played these Summit League teams, so uh, what adjustments do you make as you move into the new conference? Well, uh, first of all, we're going to see what the other team's playing in the preseason. Then we definitely want to review the DVDs and tapes and see where they at when we played and where they at now that they're we're coming back in a conference. So that's going to be adjustment at that point. But, you know, our schedule this year, it's a little bit all over the place. I really didn't expect that. Um, but, you know, when we were in uh, Southland, you will leave on Wednesday, play two games, come back on Saturday. Well, this year is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a little bit tougher, I think, to being student athlete. They're going to uh, miss a lot of school, and that's going to be a little bit of my concern. Sure. But I have a good kids. They have good grades, so I think we'll do well. And volleyball really gets going uh, big this weekend with Summit League teams playing all over the uh, country in tournaments. And you can find all the results at thesummitleague.org. Coming up next, a Summit League summer in Italy. Stories on a pair of student athletes who spent some vacation time overseas. And later, the Nader. We'll see how our Summit League guy is doing after his first year in the NBA. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort and Dakota Land Honda. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Health and your Heartland Chevy dealers. Well, how cool would it be to study in Europe over the summer if you were a college kid? Turns out pretty cool. Here is one Summit League athlete who spent some of her summer in Italy. My name is Kimberly Bailey. I am a redshirt junior here at UNO. I played defense last year. I was the libero on the team. And this, this summer I got to study abroad during our month off in May and I decided to go to Florence, Italy. I took a three week summer uh, social media class. And for me, I'm a PR advertising and speech communication double major. So it fit perfectly into my degree but it was also a lot of fun and just got to look into more how to utilize social media internationally and just getting better at the tactical side of it and it was really cool because I got we got to work with a surfboard skateboard and endoboard shaping shop outside of Pisa Italy so the leaning tower of Pisa and we got to do a social media campaign for them that really focused on uh, Syria, the Syrian refugees working with the UN, the United Nations, and uh, promoting a shirt that they wanted all proceeds to go to help the Syrian refugees, so it was really cool. Some of the things I learned on my trip were really how to be independent. Um, growing up I was always a pretty independent person, I wanted to do things myself, but really going overseas with nobody else that I knew for 30 days was amazing. It was really cool to just 
take the city of Florence as it, as it was and just explore however I wanted to. So it was really nice to just be, have some free time, just take my summer and really enjoy it. And I learned everything from, I mean, I learned things in my class, uh, social media, I learned how to be more of a strategist. and. I really learned a lot from my really cool professor who worked for one of the newspapers there. And then I met a lot of great people. Um, I'm not too shy, so it was, I didn't really have to learn how to make friends on the fly, but it was really fun meeting a lot of new people from all across the United States, but also in Italy and just everywhere else, also on my trip when I went to Switzerland and Germany. So that was a lot of fun, and I mean, taking away the GPS off your phone and reading a map for everything was a lot of fun too. So. I had a great time. Now, while Bailey was in Florence, a Summit League softball player named Carissa Kuchis was studying about 100 miles to the south in one of the world's most beautiful and historic cities. I was in Rome for six weeks. I took two classes, Ancient Rome and its Monuments and Photojournalism. And the classes lasted four hours each. I took them on Monday and Wednesday. Uh, my first one, Ancient Rome and its Monuments, went from 9 a.m. to 1 in the afternoon. And I had to wake up at around 7.30 because we, it was an on-site class, so I would walk about 50 minutes to an hour to get to where we were meeting. And my teacher would teach on site, and then we'd average five miles walking around Rome all day, so I had my little water bottle, sweating it out. Um, had a great time in that class. Very challenging, it was good. You had to know everything about the history, to the sculptures, to the different eras. Was it Republic, was it the Empire, and who was ruling, what was this area, when it was, and it was a lot of information. And then straight when that class was over, I'd walk about an hour to my other location of class for uh, photojournalism which was my favorite, I absolutely loved it. And I was there for four hours, and it went from two to six, and it was on site as well. So we'd walk all around uh, Rome, shoot pictures, some days we'd be in the lab looking them over, and it was just an incredible experience. The days I had off, I spent Tuesday reading, studying, doing all my homework, and then the following days exploring Rome. I figure if you are that far, you need to do as much as you can when you're there, so I went to I started off my trip in Rome, and then I traveled to Tuscany, Naples, Venice, Florence, uh, Switzerland, and Greece, and then three islands in Greece. I have to say I was most wowed by Switzerland. Uh, I did a lot of outdoor activities. I went skydiving, canyoning, and um, whitewater rafting and had an absolute blast. It's just that thrill that you just crave and the, even the sights, you're surrounded by the Swiss Alps which you cannot get any more beautiful than that. You just walk out and you think you're in a movie. It was incredible, I'd go back in a heartbeat. I would connect this to my biggest adjustment and that was my pace. I think a lot of student athletes and most people in the US are very fast paced. We wanna go, 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 go. We're on a schedule all the time. I would say walk slow. If you walk slow, plan out enough time that you can walk like a snail, well, glide like a snail, but and you can see more, you observe more, you people watch more, and you take in the most. If I walked slower, I think I would have gotten more out of it. It's such a small thing that you can change, but it, was, it would have made a huge difference. Kuchis, by the way, hit 318 last year for the Leathernecks. She was a second team all Summit League, and she was also on the academic honor roll. When we come back, some news and notes, and former Summit League baller Nate Walters back in South Dakota to go camping. Hear how fun it was to win the fewest games in the NBA last year with the Milwaukee Bucks. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort and Dakota Land Honda. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Health and your Heartland Chevy dealers. Nate Walters was the Summit League Men's Basketball Player of the Year two years ago at South Dakota State. He was a rookie in the NBA last year with the Milwaukee Bucks, and that means that he is now a big attraction at kids camps around the country. He was at the Pentagon in Sioux Falls this summer to give a little back to his young fans. Yeah, it's good to be back. Um, I came back in May for a little bit just to see uh, college, but it's nice to be back here in Sioux Falls and see these guys, and it's a nice partnership, so I'm really glad to be here, and it's a good experience so far. 
Well, he is still only 23 years old. Walters is from St. Cloud, Minnesota, grew up a big Timberwolves fan, and he gets it that it is a big deal for young players to see him now and try to play like him. I know growing up, I used to love going to these camps and would always learn a couple of things and try to do it at home in the backyard that same night and try to do it. So just try to give them a couple of pointers that they can take back and hopefully work on when they get home. Walters averaged seven points, three rebounds, three assists last season, and he expects himself and his team to be better in his second season now with Milwaukee. I mean, it was a lot of fun. Um, obviously, the wins and losses weren't great, um, but a lot of the senior guys got a lot of good experience, and going into the year, I didn't know how much playing time I was going to get, and was able to get quite a bit, so I think that'll help me uh, for the next couple of years. We will see if the Bucks can manage more than 15 wins this year. Uh, that's what they had last year. And we finish up with some league news and notes. South Dakota State is going to be good again in cross country. The men are ranked number 10 in the regional rankings right now. The women are number 14 for Coach Rod DeHaven. Victoria Kappel of Western Illinois earns the Defensive Player of the Week honor in women's soccer this week. Lizzie Lucas and Rebecca Sparkman are your Offensive Players of the Week. Lucas scored three goals against Presentation College. Sparkman scored three times against St. Mary's of Nebraska. And that is the first time since 2000 that two Summit League players have gone for the hat trick in women's soccer on the same day. Thanks to all of our member schools. We will see you next week on Inside the Summit League.